In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Prayer to Christ the King. O Jesus Christ, I acknowledge Thee as universal King. All that has been made has been created for Thee. Exercise all Thy rights over me. I renew my baptismal vows, renouncing Satan, his pomps, and his works. And I promise to live as a good Christian. In particular, do I pledge myself to labor to the best of my ability for the triumph of the rights of God and of thy church. Divine heart of Jesus, to thee do I proffer my poor services, laboring that all hearts may acknowledge thy sacred kingship, and that thus the reign of thy peace be established throughout the whole universe. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're looking at My Catholic Faith, Lesson 101, Unnecessary Servile Work. We have an image of a parish church and the people walking to church. And the caption reads, The illustration shows a parish church on a Sunday morning. The people are hastening to church to obey the precept of hearing Mass. It is a mortal sin to fail to sanctify Sundays and holy days through our own fault. To keep these days holy... We must hear Mass, abstain from servile work, and devote the day to pious works. Wholesome recreation and innocent amusements which do not interfere with our religious obligations are allowed. Too often, however, fun appears to be the main feature. What is forbidden by the third commandment of God? By the third commandment of God, all necessary servile work on Sunday is forbidden. What is servile work? Servile work is that which requires labor of body rather than of mind. Servile work is that ordinarily performed by laborers, work in which the mind has the greater share such as reading, writing, teaching, drawing, studying, and music practice is not servile and is not forbidden. Servile work performed on Sunday is not considered a grievous sin unless it is continued beyond two hours or becomes the cause of scandal or bad example. Employers who force their employees to do unnecessary servile work on Sunday are responsible for the violation of the third commandment. Employers should make it possible for the employees to comply with their religious duties. The trial of lawsuits and public buying and selling are also forbidden. Catholics should make provision on Saturday for their food and other necessities of Sunday, so that no store may be forced to keep open. The non-observance of Sunday is often attended with material evils, such as poverty and sickness. God is the God of nature as well as of the law. Those who do not observe Sunday and keep working lose, lose their... Wait a minute, try this again... Those who do not observe Sunday and keep working often lose their health and thereby sink deeper and deeper into poverty. Those who desecrate Sunday and do not hear Mass fall into all kinds of vices. In Holy Scripture we find the Jews losing their holy city and being taken into captivity because they violated the Sabbath. When is servile work allowed on Sunday? Servile work is allowed on Sunday when the honor of God and our own need or that of our neighbor requires it. Preparing a place for Holy Mass is a work for the honor of God and may be done even on a Sunday. In a parish where the women are all occupied during the week and can meet for their altar society meetings only on Sundays, it would be allowed for them to sew or repair vestments for the church. Work of daily necessity, such as cooking, cleaning, and sweeping, and buying and selling of necessary food, may be performed even on Sunday. Sewing is not permitted, as it is not of necessity. Even servile work, when necessary for one's support or to prevent serious financial loss, is permitted on Sunday. Farmers are allowed to care for their cattle and domestic animals, and even to get in crops that otherwise might spoil. Our Lord does not desire man to suffer on account of Sunday. For he says the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. 
servile work needed by our neighbor may be performed on Sunday. For example, a farmer who has attended all week to his own farm may help a sick neighbor attend to his on Sunday. Those in charge of persons who are necessarily on duty on Sunday, such as policemen, foremen, soldiers, etc., are obliged to give them an opportunity to hear Mass, if not every Sunday, at least as often as possible. Domestic help can easily be permitted to go to Mass if their duties are properly arranged. Are amusements forbidden on Sunday? Amusements are not forbidden on Sunday. Only those that interfere with the Sunday obligations are forbidden. Sunday is a day of rest. On Sunday, therefore, we are permitted to relax from our daily work in wholesome recreation. Not too much emphasis should be given in competitive games as to which side wins or loses. A good loser is better than a poor winner who is proud of himself. Quote, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he had rested from all his work. From Genesis chapter 2, verse 3. If God, who needed no rest, chose to stop his work of creation, we should imitate his divine example and rest after six days of labor. The experience of all peoples has borne out the wisdom of this practice of resting one day out of the week. As an example, we may cite the case of the French Revolution. The French atheist in control wished to change the old order completely, and went so far as to change the number of days in the week to ten. They could not, however, retain the new week, for even the work animals, unable to endure work without rest, died of exhaustion. To attend entertainments such as dances up to a late hour on Saturday night, even when in themselves they are not wrong, is a poor way of preparing for the Lord's day. Those who stay up late Saturday night are inclined to oversleep on Sunday morning. As a result, if they do not omit Mass altogether, they will not hear it devoutly. An outstanding example of such entertainments is the New Year's Eve all-night dancing so fashionable in these days. People go to dances and uh, carousals in different varieties of dress and undress, with paint, powder, and all kinds of worldly decorations on their persons. Then those, feel, then those that feel a twinge of conscience run out for an intermission of Mass, to return perhaps to the dance, or to go home to sleep all the day of New Year, the Feast of the Circumcision, a holy day of obligation. Let any reasonable man say whether this kind of amusement is in consonance with the commandment to sanctify the Lord's day. Some people seem to take advantage of Sunday to indulge more freely in useless or sinful pastimes. It is a scandal to see people engaging, engaged in excessive eating, drinking, dancing, and vanity on Sunday of all days. It is an abuse of a sacred institution, the Lord's Day. Quote, the kingdom of God does not consist in food and drink. From St. Paul's Epistle to the Romans, chapter 14, verse 17. To many, the Lord's Day and Holy Days are nothing more than days of enjoyment. What was intended as an accompaniment becomes the main theme. Not infrequently, Sunday is taken as a favorite day for gambling, drinking, and other vices. Then indeed is God's day desecrated and God robbed of the honor due him. When Sunday is desecrated by vice and unrestrained pleasure, we can expect by this loosening of morals, the gradual dissolution of family ties and the final disintegration of society. Neglecting common worship, Members of the family become indifferent to each other. Children turn stubborn and disobedient. The father hardly stays home and knows strangers better than his own children. Since the children lose respect for their parents, it is an easy step to lose to loss of respect for all authority, including the secular power. 
Thus, by forgetting God's day, men live like heathen and will die outside God's grace. That finishes the reading for Lesson 101, Unnecessary Servile Work. Do you have any questions or comments? I have a question, Your Excellency. So a lot of today's work, or what we would consider like jobs or careers, tend to be white collar work, sitting in offices, reading, writing, talking. So is it permissible to do that on Sunday, even though that would be considered the work that someone does during? Um, it is permissible if you can't arrange your work schedule to be off that day. I would suggest that you should try to be off because that is your work um, and it is how you earn your daily bread and that day, Sunday, should not be the day that you're pursuing that. Um, and of course, yes, if your ox falls into a pit and you have to draw it out, that's uh, permitted, obviously. Um, so if the, your work demands this of you and you can't get off from uh, doing this, um, then you may continue to do that. But Sunday has to be made holy in some way. Um, and I think that's what we tend to forget. Um, you know, we're out of town, I can't get to Mass, um, so we don't have to go to Mass, so we don't have to do anything on Sunday. And I think that is a mistake that many people make. Um, we're on vacation, it's Sunday, we can't go to Mass, so we'll just sleep in and then we'll continue our vacation and just forget that it is the Lord's Day. And I think that's a terrible tragedy, especially for Catholics. Um, we should be doing something to make the day holy. Um, and I would suggest if you're not home and able to get up early and go to Mass, then you should get up early wherever you are and at least follow along with the Mass or say some <clears throat> special prayers I don't think it would be unbecoming if you're on vacation to get up the children up early and say we're going to say the rosary um, or uh, make time in the day somewhere where we're going to set aside time and we're going to say the rosary and it's usually in my, at least in my humble opinion easier to do that first thing in the morning than later on in the day because we get involved in this and we don't want to set that time aside to stop whatever activity it is and if this one is ready, then the other ones are not. And when the other ones are ready, this one is not. And it is uh, this constant fighting. And Sunday becomes a day of anxiety, of frustration, uh, that um, it should not be. It's supposed to be a day of rest and relaxation, a day dedicated to worshiping and loving God. Catholics should make provisions on Saturday for their food and necessities so that the stores are not forced to view. So obviously us not going to Kroger on a Sunday is not going to make Kroger close down because they're going to stay open regardless of what we do. But as a Catholic, should we make that a point that we are not shopping on Sundays? We should definitely make that a point that we should try not to shop on Sunday. But then again, if you'll notice later on, it mentioned, I think that uh, you may buy the necessary food and go shopping for necessary food uh, on Sunday that is essential. So, you know, if... So it's all right to get our donuts Sunday morning. <laughs> I would think so. Uh, <laughs> that way they're fresher for the uh, children to have their donuts. And if you brought them home on Saturday night, somebody might eat them all, huh? <laughs> Thank you. Saturday evening, the preparations on Saturday evening. I've been trying to emphasize to people that traditionally you went to church on Saturday evening to make your confession. You didn't wait till Sunday morning. Um, I think we started having confessions on Sunday morning because people had to travel such a distance. And to save them from making the trip on Saturday evening and then Sunday morning, we would hear uh, confessions on Sunday morning before Mass. Um, and it would be, you went to, con 
fashion on Saturday night, you took your Saturday, your weekly bath on Saturday night, you got your clothes washed and pressed and laid out and ready to go Sunday morning so that Sunday morning there is no mad rush, you're not searching for your, where's my socks or my shoes or whatever, they're all ready, um, we simply get dressed and we are ready to go to Mass um, and to give God our full attention and I think that is the goal. Um, and however we can arrange it, it just means that we're placing God first and foremost in our life uh, rather than later on. But this unnecessary servile work, um, you know, I don't try, to, I'm trying not to be too harsh uh, with people because on every Sunday I'm in an airport and I am forcing people to work at the airport, um, you know, from the pilots, the air uh, flight attendants the maintenance, the uh, janitorial services, the uh, people working the gates and the uh, counters. Um, so all these people have to work. And I can recall, it's been a few years ago, there was a lady working at one of the clubs in the uh, Delta Sky Clubs. And uh, she was working on Sunday and uh, Usually most of the people don't pay much attention to me and it is basically self-serve if you want anything. But she asked if she could get a cup of coffee because she had seen me there before. She knew that I would drink coffee so she asked if I would like her to get me a cup of coffee and she brought it and I said thank you very much. And she says no problem. I said well thank you for working on Sunday. I know it's uh, the day of rest and it's the Lord's day and um, I'm sorry that I had to make you work. And she was almost in tears, but she sent me an email saying she was ready to quit that day until she met me at the club. <laughs> she was having such a terrible time working there, uh, feeling unappreciated, but my few words uh, inspired her to uh, not to quit, I guess. I thought it was quite interesting that just a kind word can really transform someone's day, um, not only their day, but their entire life. And I think what better day to do that on than Sunday and to show our appreciation for those who are really making a sacrifice so that uh, I can bring the Mass to people. Even though they don't realize that's what they're doing, um, they are making it possible for me to do that. And so it's, uh, we have to avoid, I think, the Pharisaical uh, letter of the law the legality, you can do this and you can't do that. I think more than all of this, we need to look at the spirit of the law. Um, are we doing this, offering the day to God? And how can we best offer this day to God? Okay, any other questions, comments? All right. We will end with the act of resignation to the divine will. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. O Lord my God, I now at this moment readily and willingly accept at thy hand whatever kind of death it may please thee to send me with all its pains, penalties, and sorrows. Benedictio de omnipotentis, Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti, descended super vos, et maniat semper. Amen.